Good morning, everybody. Merry uh, Sunday before Christmas Eve, Christmas weekend. Um, thank you for being here. You look beautiful this morning. Those of you at home, you look beautiful as well. Uh, we would love to invite you to stand with us if you're able. This, uh, this first song is a song of expectation, a song of, of longing for hope. And let's just, uh, let's fill the room with our voices if you know this one.
shall he break for the sake is our brother and in his name all the pressure will cease sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus praise so lost in the music I forgot I was supposed to come up and do the announcements <laughs> it's like the worst job because you just want to soak it in and then you have to get up and come up here but anyway good morning y'all I'm Katherine Johnston the teaching and creative pastor here at ANC welcome welcome we're so glad you're here whether you're new or you've been around for a long time good morning I have a few announcements for us if you are new or recently visiting ANC fill out an info card online at this QR code just take a picture of it, it'll take you straight there. We would love to get to know you, and you can drop in the comments if you wanna grab coffee with one of the pastors or staff members. We would just love to connect. Um, some other things going on. Today, after church, we're having choir practice. If you signed up to be in the choir for the Christmas Eve Eve service, just hang out here right after church, go get your kids, and 
children's ministry first, and then coming out here, and we'll have some snacks before we sing together. Um, speaking of Christmas Eve Eve, we are having our Christmas Eve Eve service next Saturday, December 23rd at 5.30 p.m., and then we won't have church the next Sunday, so plan to join us on Saturday evening next week instead of Sunday morning. That way you can be with your loved ones on Christmas Eve. Um, and after the service, we're having a gathering in the community center, so bring a snack. Bring your favorite Christmas snack, sweet or savory, and cheese balls, or sausage balls, I hear Trey <laughs> subliminally messaging me from the front row. Um, if you're going to bring a snack, if you would email Angela, which this QR code will take you to her email, and let her know if you're going to bring sweet or savory, we're asking that you just bring two dozen of whatever sounds good to you. Um, Thank you so, so much to everyone who donated for the Posada Esperanza gift drive for winter clothing for the residents there. We were little elves last Sunday and wrapped up all the gifts, and then we delivered them um, to the houses on Tuesday. And just thank you so much to everyone who helped gift those families with some joy and some warmth this holiday season. Also, thank you so much for those of you who donated to the Santa Rita stocking drive. We are fully um, funded for that, and we're going to put the, together those stockings this week and deliver them. But we have another giving opportunity for you if you would like to be a part of Blessing Families there. There are two families in need at Santa Rita. One specifically needs shoes for their six-member family, and another is asking for a bike for their child for Christmas. So I would just encourage us to be the light this holiday season and gift these families with some joy. You can, this QR code will take you to the PayPal for that or just email Stephanie if you leave here and you still wanna um, be able to give. Um, all right, I have a special announcement about our contemplative retreat from my friend and fellow pastor, Dustin Height. Hello, y'all. So uh, my wife, Christina, is the clear and concise one, so I'm going to read my announcement, but hopefully it's still captivating. So right from the start, a point of clarity, this is a contemplative retreat, not a get saved, get right with God retreat, though we still like alliteration. So I'm going to share about rest, reconnection, and, and rhythms. Rest, our hope for this one or two night getaway, you have the choice, is that each of us has space to settle, to take a nap, to go on a hike, or read by the fireplace, and decompress from all the persistent stresses of life so we can each rediscover a sense of wholeness. Secondly, reconnection. We'll offer spiritual practices that will help us connect with our bodies, connect with God, connect with each other, new friends and familiar faces, and connect with nature, especially if your spiritual journey feels stagnant or if you'd just like to broaden your exposure to the mystics and the contemplative Christian tradition, this journey is perfect for you and has already been encouragement to lots of folks. We've done a couple trials that have gone well. And then lastly, rhythms. Catherine and I are intentional in how we design these retreats so that there is variety and balance. Time learning, practicing, discussing as a full group, time breaking off to be alone and reflect, and time gathering with a handful of folks to share your story and listen to the journeys of fellow pro pilgrims. Each retreat will seek to balance these rhythms and also introduce certain threads that will be built over time with a unique theme each weekend. The January retreat is the first in a series that will lay the groundwork for future retreats, so you really don't want to miss this one. And details, so you can spend one or two nights, like I mentioned, with your own private room and bathroom. We're not, we're not glamping. Uh, it's an hour north of here at Cedar Break Retreat Center in Temple, Texas. It's January 12th through the 14th. So you could spend Friday night, you could spend Saturday night, or you could spend both. And Trey's email at the bottom of the uh, announcement, there's a link to click there where you can look at the Google form or right here to get more details. I know with the holiday season, you're like, that's January. That's like another lifetime from now. But it's less than a month away, so we want to, you know, get you a, a room reserved if you want to do that. And uh, talk to Catherine and I if you have more questions. All ready? So much of um, the beauty of a retreat, I think, is the energy of the people that you're with when you're there. And what Dustin brings is such a calm and deep presence. So, like, even just being in the same room with him, I feel like is a 
form of retreat. So if that's something you feel like your heart needs, just go look up the details and I hope you'll consider signing up. Um, the last thing I have for you is it's the end of the year. And so this is the time of the year where we ask if you're in a position to do so, that you consider giving an end of your gift to ANC. Um, we completely rely on your financial generosity to build this community and to create the loving world that we want to live in with social justice and advocacy, but it really does take every single one of us, like your voice, your um, presence in order to build that together. And so just please consider giving if you're in a position to do so at the end of this year. Um, all right, so if you will stand, if you're able, find someone you don't know and ask them, elf on the shelf, yes or no? <laughs> oh, good morning, online viewers. I'm so glad you're here with us this morning. Um, it's so hard for me to believe that December is like almost over practically. My kids are going to go back to are getting home from school soon, and um, I've just been thinking of you this week, wondering how the Advent boxes are going. I know some of you have sent in pictures from your hikes and from the paintings that you've been doing. Thank you so much. If I haven't replied to you yet, I've gotten them. I just haven't had a chance to reply back, but I so appreciate being able to feel connected to you. And I also wanted to highlight the Santa Rita um, giving opportunity that we really created as a way for out-of-towners and virtual viewers to participate and feel connected to this community. I think that Dana put the information in the Out of Towners Facebook group, and you can also find it in the e Trey's email, of course. But um, thank you for your presence here and for continuing to bless our community by being you and by being here. And if I don't get to tell you this uh, before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Hi, um, this is Katie, my wife. I'm Mario. Welcome to the third week of Advent. This week we light the candle of joy, along with the candles of hope and peace. This pink candle, also known as the shepherd's candle, is a different color, representing the spontaneous joy that can surprise us even in a dark season just as the angels surprised the shepherds, announcing good tidings of great joy while they were watching their flocks by night. This candle reminds us to stay open to the possibility of wonder, to let ourselves be surprised by joy. Our lectionary reading for the third week of Advent comes from John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, and verses 19 to 28. Listen as I read. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice, the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. 
Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Join me in prayer. God who appears when we least expect it, surprise us with joy today. Even the simple joys hidden in the crumbs of a cookie jar, all the glitter from Christmas wrapping paper that sticks to a friend's cheek. We give thanks for the joy that appears. Wow, thank you guys. Very good. You can take that. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, hi, good morning. Trey, I'm here so Jason can play bass. So that's pretty much, that's it. There's glitter? God, that's the bane of my existence. I hate glitter. What is it? A glowing, sure. Uh, that, that I'm not. Um, welcome, welcome to Austin New Church. Uh, I was just sitting here thinking about that last song you sang. It, it, it just got everybody so excited. For, but, uh, but I was thinking about my mom who was so mad when Chris Tomlin took Amazing Grace and added My Chains Are Gone to it. Just blew her world. So, But anyway, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's where my head was during that song. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was beautiful. Anyway, welcome, welcome to week three of Advent at Austin New Church. As directed by uh, the church calendar and the Advent liturgy and the text, this year we're intentionally being focused and we're teaching on the light. And if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed, you may have noticed that we've gone from, we're, we're, we're narrowing our scope. Um, from last week, you know, two weeks ago, Jason taught on quantum something or another, uh, and then last week, uh, Catherine taught on uh, light in the wilderness. Uh, and this week, we're going to see light in those around us. And uh, next week, we'll see the light, the light in the manger. And uh, from big to small, from complex to simple, bringing our focus and attention from being scattered by the million things that are going on in our worlds right now, all the events, all the pressures to a small, smelly stable in a nondescript town 55 miles north of Nazareth, where supposedly nothing good could come from. This is what Advent is about, drawing us in, getting us closer, making it simple, and removing the obstacles while sharpening our focus on what really matters. Every year about this time, right, well, right after Thanksgiving, at our home, it's time to decorate for Christmas, right? I know some folks do it earlier. Christy was telling me she does it right after Halloween or something, right? Anyway, um, but after Thanksgiving is when we do it. And by we, I mean Jenny. Well, she and I have a deal kind of where I go up in the attic and I bring down the four boxes, only four, Christy. I'm sure you all have 40. But I bring down four boxes plus a tree skirt, plus a wreath, plus some little wood things that we sit by our front door. That's what I bring down. And then she's like this Christmas fairy and whips it into just this beautiful, uh, kind of a hallmarky looking card, but not overdone, but not underdone kind of thing. Anyway, it looks really nice. But last year, one of our pre-lit trees nearly ruined Christmas in the Pruitt household because two of the strands of lights on this tree just went out completely. So this year, uh, Jenny decided she'd take all the lights off the tree and uh, it delayed, it kind of delayed our Christmas by about two days because she literally snipped every light and every connector off of those tree branches. And there was a huge pile, I don't know, it's probably, it probably this tall in our living room of uh, wires and lights and connectors and stuff that she just unloaded from this tree. Anyway, it was a complete mess, but then she put on strands of her own and, and, and was able to make it look uh, beautiful. I mean, probably even more so than what the pre-lit tree looked. Okay, I'll say that. Anyway, she saved us from the, she saved and rescued our Christmas from the clutches of bad interior decoration illumination. 
Okay. So I'm proud to say that she, she saved the Christmas for the Pruitt household and the lights she strung are just, just gorgeous. So anyway, maybe this is the reason I'm watching more Christmas movies this year. Anybody with me? Anybody like these shows? Oh my God. Okay, so I've probably seen 10 or more now. I know that's a lot, but I've, I've seen 10 or more, a couple of the old standards and, and plenty, uh, a lot of the old standards, a couple of the new ones. I think the old standards are better, but the one I particularly like is Christmas Vacation. Anybody? Okay, everybody. Everybody knows. Um, but I, I, the reason why I like this movie is because um, it's funny, and then also it's, it's not as predictable as the Hallmark variety Christmases, right? I mean, Cousin Eddie, come on. Um, I've seen it a thousand times, but I still love to watch it every, if not twice every year. Okay, do you remember the scene? This is something I found out this year. Do you remember the scene where Chevy Chase, Clark, is up in the attic, right? And it's freezing outside, and his family's left, left him, and he's locked in the attic, right? And so he finds this old box of clothes and movies. He puts on the clothes, including the, I don't know, some fur wrap thing and the gloves. And then he pulls these movies out and starts watching these old movies. Well, the movie that he is watching is dated 1955. Remember that? And it's, the movie was made, Christmas Vacation was made in 1989. That makes the movie 34 years old. And if my urging now makes you go home and watch Christmas Vacation tonight, it's 34 years after Christmas Vacation was made. So you'd be watching, if you watch the little film, you'll be watching a 34-year-old movie in a 34-year-old movie. Anyway, <laughs> that just was fascinating to me, so I thought I'd pass it along. <laughs> Has nothing to do with anything this morning. But the reason, I, I think the reason why I thought about this movie was the ordeal that the Christmas lights presented for, for, for uh, Clark. Uh, Clark had to have the biggest and most gaudy Christmas uh, decoration and illumination of his yard uh, in the display of Christmas light history. Um, and how the simplest solution should always be checked first. If you haven't seen it or it's been a while, it's worth the, it's worth the laughs and it's worth watching. I, I recommend it highly. So if you've never seen it, kids, go home and watch it. So the best thing about Christmas isn't the gaudy Christmas decorations or the, um, the over, overproduction of everything now, but it's finding the simple and small things in the bright lights in others and in Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, as he declares in John 8, 12. But then Jesus tells us in Matthew, so are we. So I'm going to reread, although you guys, the Davises, you did an amazing job reading. I'm like, you stole my thunder, but you really didn't. You just set it up really nicely. The, we're going to reread a portion of what they read in John 1, which says this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only to be a witness to the light. Now, this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, well, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John replied in these wor the words of Isaiah, the prophet, he said, I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Let's go back and look at verses 6 and 7 real quick, though. There was a man sent by God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. What I hope today that we see in this passage is, A, there was a man, B, his name was John, but that he, John, made himself available to testify as a witness concerning the light, so that all might believe. You know, um... When he was asked, are you the Messiah? I am not. Are you Elijah? I am not. Are you a prophet? I am not. And then who the heck are you? And he said, I'm the, I am John's declaration. If, he, if John had our declaration of who Jesus says we are, he would have said, I am a light. The voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. I'm not sure if I've ever thought about the significance of this exchange before this week, but here I see John the baptizer simply bearing witness to Jesus. And though they were first cousin, and, and though he knows he is not Jesus, he still knows who Jesus is. 
and what he represents. John isn't proclaiming Jesus' birth. This was years later. But he is proclaiming Jesus as Messiah. What he is saying is that even though, even if you miss the miracle of his birth and the mundane 30 years that follow and being, growing up a carpenter's son, don't miss this. There's a new light in the world and, and this light, his life is an example for all of us. John knew his role. And when challenged by the Jewish authorities, he made it clear that he was not, but he was pointing to Jesus. And I think we do this when we show up. I think you and I do this as we show up, not just in church, but when we show up at work, when we show up in school, when we show up in our communities, when we show up in opportunities that we have to serve, in where we invest our time and in our resources. These, are all, these all matter because these, all, these things are all light. We are light. If you and I, if, if you and I were on trial, all of this evidence would be brought forth as testimony. And there would also be witnesses, people who could come forth as, to testify of, of our character, of our light. You guys have probably heard this, that, that character is often defined by who you are when no one is looking, right? But there's always somebody looking. Attorneys always look for someone to shine the light on something, aren't they? You know the character I'm talking about. It's the putting the grocery cart back in the little cart collector in the parking lot, even if it's raining character. You know that character. It's sharing your generosity to your church and your orgs you believe in character. Even though you're the only one that knows. Maybe, you're, maybe your spouse does. Maybe your accountant does. Well, that's that taking a meal to a sick friend or, or watching their kids while they recuperate type of character. That's not something you share on social media, but that person knows that you served. It's that loving others as we love ourselves character. If you went on trial today, you'd want the light shined in some places and possibly not other places because light exposes truth, right? And as Christ followers, it exposes the truth about Jesus or what you believe about Jesus. Matthew 5, 14 says this, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put light do they light a lamp and put it under a bowl? Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus told his, his, his followers, not only am I the light, but you're the light too. And to let your light shine before others, calling them to live an active faith, not a passive one, Put your light on a stand. Your circumstances are an opportunity to shine brightly for Jesus and to share God's overcoming truth with those around you. Your, fa your family and your community can tell what you believe by how you live. I believe we put our light under a bowl when we choose to exclude ourselves from community. When we opt out of real relationships, when we're li we are limiting our light. We are limiting the opportunities to be a witness. This is why community is so important. And ANC in the church that encourages only relationships within the walls, but maybe more importantly, we have to maintain the, wall, the, the, the relationships and connection outside the walls. We all know that there is a darkness in the world, and in the church I grew up in, this was something to be feared. Anybody relate? The darkness out there, it's all to be feared. To be separate from that. But is there, there's, this is where the light shines the brightest, isn't it? This is what Jesus did. He stepped down from the comforts of heaven into the darkness and revealed himself to it. He is the light of the world, and so are we. Imagine if Jesus hadn't stepped down from heaven 2,000 years ago. We wouldn't have his example of how to live. Then think of removing yourself from the places you were sent. We may be only a reflection of the light that people will see. So let's press into those opportunities. Press into community. Have you ever been outside at night, and maybe into the woods or, or, uh, or just somewhere where it's super dark, where the, the lights of town or whatever aren't competing for the lights of the sky? 
where the moon is full and bright and you can see things clearly by a full moon. Maybe not as clearly as when it's daytime, but certainly when, when there's a crescent moon or a, or a you know, half moon or something, there, a full moon that's bright is, can light up a, 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 a place for you. The only time the moon doesn't reflect the light of the sun is when the world or the earth gets in between the moon and its source light. Maybe it's a partial blockage, but sometimes the earth is fully eclipsed in the, by the sun in the sun's light. So maybe today we, we might say, you know what, I'm in, the dark, I'm in a dark space or time in my life right now. I don't have any light to share. I've lost my source. It's hidden from me. Maybe I'm not as reflective of the sun as I was at some point. Maybe my attention isn't on the full picture, but it's through a tiny hole, the only hole I can see through right now. I can't tell if I'm light, therefore I must be dark. Well, Jesus doesn't say anything about that. He says, tells his followers, you are the light of the world. And he also says, I am the light of the world. And that a light cannot and should not ever be hidden. So when we, even when we doubt we're light, we're still light. I would argue that we are whether we want to be or not. We bear witness to what we believe to be true about Jesus. If we are followers of Jesus, it is reflected in how we love. It is reflected in who we love. It's, a, it's reflected in who we serve, how we follow. And these things are all light. By virtue of the fact that you're either following us online today, hello, or you're in the room with us, tells me that you are light. You're a reflection of what you believe. You're a reflection of God's love for all of humanity. You believe that justice matters. You believe that Jesus is worth following. And you believe in ANC's expression of this light. So this week we wanted to have uh, face pictures of a bunch of people on the wall behind me. And we thought about a stock photo with a bunch of faces but we ask all of you to share your photos of yourself and, your, and or your families. And Melinda put this collage of pictures together. Is it up? Yay! I, y'all, when I got it, I loved it. I was like looking through all your pictures and I poured over it. Most of you I know, some of you I need to know better. Um, all that to say, the pic be picture behind me represents this community. And it's not all of us I know, Christy. But it does say something about all the different places our lights shine. The light and love we have for each other, but also the opportunities for light that we have in a dark world. Thank you for sharing your pics with us. I think it's beautiful. I think we'll just leave those up for the rest of the time. Now, you might be in the room or tuning in online and you go, aha, nope, nope, I'm a skeptic. I'm not a follower of Jesus. I don't believe in God. You might call me spiritual, but I'm not a Christian, that's for sure. And I would say this, great, you're welcome here. You are certainly welcome here, but someone's light is reflecting Jesus, and you are drawn to that for some reason, otherwise you wouldn't be here. You see, light does that. It exposes truth, and whether you believe in the truth of Jesus and his teachings is irrelevant. And whether you believe the earth is flat or round doesn't change the fact of what is the truth is, whatever that may be. You know, when we were growing up as kids, we learned a little song, and it goes like this. This little light of mine, y'all too, huh? I know, right? We can... I'm not singing into this. You don't want that. There you go. I love it. And it was a cute song. Okay. It was a cute song, but it's certainly tied to that scripture about hiding your light under a bushel or a, or a bowl of what it says here in scripture. But I was thinking about it, and I said, wouldn't it be nice, thinking back to our last sermon series, wouldn't it be nice if, if it was as simple now as it was when we were little kids? And I thought about all the lights that that I have had illuminated in my life throughout these 50-some years. I, I think I said 57. Is it 57? 57 years? Anyway, it is 57. And it's all downhill from here, I hear. Anyway, no? It's uphill? I'm out. 
I want it to be downhill. It's downwind, wind behind me, all that thing. But anyway, this, it was a good exercise for me. I certainly appreciate my lights, and I wanted to make sure that little me appreciates them in the moment and not wait years to appreciate them. So I decided to write a little note to myself, a note to my little light, and it goes like this. Dear little one, it's me, you, an older you, almost a half a century older, but 100% you. I'm, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, old you is proud of young you. Why? Because you're starting off on an amazing journey, a trip to somewhere amazing. I've seen it. I've lived it. Along the way, you're going to meet some really good people doing really good things. And I want to encourage you to listen and learn from them. You know that song, and Chrissy does too. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The truth of Jesus is really that simple. God, God says just love him and love others. Let your light shine. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world, but Jesus tells us later that we are too. Don't let people or anything else make you want to hide that. Your light will matter. Trust your light. In a couple of years, you're going to meet a man named Mr. Grundy. Yeah, that was his name. He's going to be your Sunday school teacher, and he's a good one. Maybe the best Sunday school teacher you'll ever have. He's a good man. Learn from him. He knows Jesus, and he is a light. A few years after that, you're going to have a pastor named Pastor Randy, and he even lets the kids call him that. He's an amazing man and a father. You're going to be friends with his daughters. Listen to him. He follows Jesus well into his 80s. And, and the story's being, still being written there, folks. I'll, you'll have to just learn and trust me on this. He is a light. Love your parents. You won't always have them. Trust them. Respect them. They have your best interests at heart. They know Jesus and they are lights. College. Just have fun. But let's be clear, that isn't light. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can do better than I did. And P.S., go to classes. You're going to meet and fall in love with the most amazing girl in the whole world. You will cause each other to fall more in love with Jesus than you love him now. She is a light. Be careful, though, not, not, not to allow things to complicate your love of God and others. Religious rules, traditions, people, or even church itself will tell you that some people are not worthy of God's love and light. You're going to stumble on this one. I know it stinks. But it's God's light that will bring you back. Ask lots of questions. Be curious about your faith. Trust the light. It reveals truth about Jesus and about you. Well, little one, I don't want to say too much more. Let's be honest. I was never little. Okay? <laughs> young, I'll say young one. Well, young one, I don't want to say too much more. The details, you'll have to learn them in time, but I wanted to let you know that Jesus loves you, that I love you, and that you will be just fine. Let that little light shine. In closing, I thought it would be a really good, if like John, we took a few seconds to voice who we are not and what we are. And I'm going to ask you questions, and the responses will be on the screen. Church, are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you a prophet? Then who the heck are you? I believe that's a good reminder for us this season. Let's pray. I want to turn off my mic first, but God, I want to thank you um, just for this reminder of who you are and for who we are. Um, in this season, Father, it's not complicated. We don't have to let it be complicated. It can be as simple as, as showing up and loving each other. Thank you for this time, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.
transitions that's what we that's my that's my nickname awkward transitions why don't you jump to your feet if you're able thanks Trey thanks band Christmas music's good isn't it 
Every year we're like, should we or should we not? I think we should. It's the only season that sings itself, so we might as well sing it, right? Might as well. All right, you guys sounded great today. Let me prepare us for communion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires are known, where could we hide from your love? If you exist at every concentric circle, then what's left? So remind us as we pray now of a cleansing, a work that's complete. It's been through your spirit from the very beginning. That in response, we may perfectly love you as you perfectly love us through Christ our Lord. In Christ, our friend, our example, the mystic who stands above all the rest for us invites each of you to a place at a table. It's a long table, y'all. And it's probably round because it goes all the way around the earth, I'm guessing. No flat earth table, Try. It's actually not okay to believe in flat earth. I don't know. <laughs> Correction. There's going to be a few corrections. No, no, no. But there's a table set for you. No one's ever going to take your place. It's always going to wait for you, and you will find your way there eventually. That's how we believe the gospel works. It's a common table. It's got your name on it. And as we wholeheartedly seek to live and walk in peace and justice and surrender and advocacy and love with one another, but primarily with ourselves first, in doing that, let us turn our hearts now to God in confession and just pray these words with me. Merciful God, we believe that you accept our heartfelt confessions today, knowing you to be gentle and kind even when we are not, we confess. We have been distracted, at times lacking in love. We have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves because we have failed to love ourselves as you do. So forgive us, we pray, and free us to be a people of peace. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you know, the, you know the exchange. It was a Thursday night. He gathered his friends and he broke bread. And then he said, this breaking is, exact, is exactly what my body's about to go through. And then he lifted a cup and he sealed the deal. And he said, and by the way, this is a brand new covenant. And by the way, no one is excluded. And they didn't get it. And we still don't get it, but we still do it every time we gather because it's, it's the kind of thing that we have to do until something just drops. It's like the old 20 peso coin slots in the public buses in Mexico City. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody knows what I'm talking about. You would drop that 20 pesos in and it would wait about four seconds and then it would drop. So in Spanish, we talk about when the idea drops. It's like, oh, we get it. When the 20 pesos finally, then you can get on the bus. And we're still doing this liturgy of communion and we do it with the mystery around the table because guys, I'm not exactly sure how the body of God is in your mouth but that's how permeated our world is with the presence of love. And so we can accept that. Even if that's a mystery, just gather around and accept that. So during the next song, the base of the stained glass that tells the story of the life of Jesus, uh, you will find uh, the elements, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're gluten intolerant, that you're, that's going to be the second window on either side for you. So pray with me these words. You should know these words by now. Pray them with me. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Will I feel that warm wind blowing Melting all the sadness off of my soul And I smell those sweet cherry blossoms Pouring all the gladness Tested like a silver and 
gold and you're the assigned me to cherry that this life affliction is not my home in winter I believe you in springtime I see you it's so good to be with you my hope has come Lord you make all things new your love is my breakthrough now Cause between you and me there is no separation A beautiful service. I wrote our benediction today thinking about Trey's message and thinking about the light that I was seeing in my friends and family this week. Orange rosemary lattes while rain drops onto our shoulders and something you say I can't remember now cracks me open like a roasted chestnut. The light in me sees the light in you. A walk around the block to look at twinkling lights while leaves crunch like broken teapots and your tiny hand holds me like a mitten. The light in me sees the light in you. An honest conversation where something true but hard is spoken and it opens a path for real connection to begin. The light in me sees the light in you. Gingerbread on your doorstep and a friendship to bridge the gap between religion, race, and creed. The light in me sees the light in you. A person who deserves choice and not forced motherhood. A person who deserves refuge and not barbed wire. A person who deserves safety, not expulsion. A person who deserves health care and a living wage. A person who deserves dignity just for existing. The light in me sees the light in you, or maybe the light that is me sees the light that is you. Go in light, enjoy this week, and we'll see you Saturday at 5.30 for the Christmas Eve Eve service. <laughs>